Welcome. If you're a regular member of St. Peter's Church or the Church of the Good Shepherd and are joining us for our worship, uh, you are very welcome here. And if you're joining us for the first time, then you are especially welcome. Uh, we're delighted that we've been able to uh, connect with you and you have found uh, this video uh, of our worship here at the end of our service. Uh, we'll provide ways that you might be able to comment and uh, connect further with us. Um, you'll understand that this week the Government and Church of England have issued new, new guidelines so that we can no longer uh, meet together publicly uh, for worship. So we here in Heswell uh, are finding new ways of being church together. Um, essentially, there's three things that we are looking to do. We're looking to uh, stay connected and to use our network of small groups, our ministry teams, uh, to keep people in connection with each other and to allow us to care uh, for one another. Uh, we're seeking to continue uh, in worship and this is one of three online services that we will be offering each week. It's our intention to post a service like this at eight o'clock every Sunday morning, uh, either on our Heswell Parish Facebook page or through the link that you may have used to find it here, uh, so that together we can continue to share uh, in worship. Uh, and then we're also looking um, to serve. Uh, we recognise this is an unprecedented time for our nation and that we as Christians have a contribution to make uh, in loving our neighbours and serving one another. So whilst we're not able to gather, we're certainly able to be Christian people in the world today. And we will be encouraging one another to find ways of service and sharing the love of Christ in the places that God uh, has put us. And so welcome to this uh, act of worship uh, here. I'm going to suggest that as we begin, you might just pause at home for a moment and just allow yourself to be conscious of God's presence with you. He's with you at home as, as much as he's with us uh, here in the church building. So welcome in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy and peace be with you. Let's pray together. Loving God, we have come to worship you. Help us to pray to you in faith to offer you praise with gratitude and to listen to your word with eagerness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We're in the season of Lent, which is traditionally a time of self-examination and penitence. And so we're going to turn, as we usually would do here at St Peter's, to a prayer of penitence in the Lenten season. All of us depend on God's grace and God's mercy. This prayer is in the form of a Kyrie, and so you might like to repeat in your own hearts the words, Lord have mercy and Christ have mercy. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. So let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Christ, have mercy. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Lord, have mercy. So may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Traditionally, in this service at St Peter's, we would now pray together the collect. The collect is of a collective prayer. Uh, we acknowledge that there are thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of Christians around the world who today will be using this prayer, certainly within the Anglican communion. And so in a sense, wherever you are at home, on your own, with your family, uh, we join in fellowship with Christians around the world as we pray this collective prayer. God of love, Passionate and strong, tender and careful, watch over us and hold us all the days of our life. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our collect was the one set for Mothering Sunday, and we're now going to share together in the words of a hymn that may traditionally be sung on Mothering Sunday that celebrates the goodness of God and the good things that he gives to us. He's held us from our mother's arms and praise that we may continue to know the tender love of God uh, through the joys, sorrows, trials of life today. So these are the words of now thank we all our gods. reading from Paul's letter to the church at Colossae, chapter 3 and beginning at verse 12. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with each other, And forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, Do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, 
giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So shall we pray as we come to reflect on that scripture together. Lord, we do thank you for your word. We pray that you would allow it to dwell richly in our hearts, that it may feed, nourish us, it may give us your peace and assurance, and it may enable us to love. For I ask in Jesus' name. I guess like many of you, I was watching the television last night, watching the news and seeing pictures of emergency healthcare workers, first in Italy and then even in our own hospitals, kitted out in the full protective clothing, caring for ill patients on ventilators uh, in IT units in hospitals in Italy and uh, here. I guess when we first saw people dressed like that in uh, Wuhan in China several months ago, maybe we rather complacently thought we would just never see that kind of image in our own country as we do now. Uh, my wife is a GP and like uh, quite a number of people uh, in our parish is uh, in the medical profession. Uh, she works in Upton and uh, just this week she's put in an order for scrubs and uh, is looking to source protective clothing for herself and for other staff working there. That clothing perhaps shocks us uh, and it disturbs us. It does remind us, doesn't it, of the very real dangers that this uh, virus poses to us. It presses upon us our own need to follow the guidelines that we've been given uh, for social isolation to ensure that we're not responsible for passing this virus on to other people. But I think it also tells us, doesn't it, very movingly, very powerfully, from what we see on the outside, the way these people dress. Uh, the love and care that they are willing to show to others, particularly in this case those who are very sick. I guess that's embodied in our National Health Service uh, and the staff who work for it. But it is something which in our own way each of us uh, is able to show. Often the clothes that we do wear on the outside uh, do say something about us. We, we've just had a discussion whether I should wear robes uh, for this or not. The fact that I've chosen to tells you something about uh, uh, my role uh, and work. Well, today our scripture summons us not to put on robes, uh, for most of us not to put on uh, protective clothing, uh, but to put on a piece of clothing, that of love, to clothe ourselves with humility, compassion, and above all love. I mean, this is a time, isn't it, when there is a need for practical isolation, um, but perhaps of more concern, the fear uh, is gripping people could actually drive us apart. And maybe that's as much cause for harm as the coronavirus itself. As Christians, we know that perfect love casts out fear. Jesus taught us to love our neighbour as ourself. And here Paul writes that we should clothe ourselves in love. We're reading this particular scripture today because it is Mothering Sunday. And it reminds us to be thankful for those who have loved us, the best of mothers, whose kindness and love has nurtured us, or others who perhaps have had that role in our lives. It calls us to take our role in loving and caring other people in the ordinary circumstances of family life, our own families, the wider church family, our community. And so this love that we're summoning to clothe ourselves with is not something for a few professionals in ITU. It is something for all of us to embrace. Clothe yourselves with love, Paul writes. That may mean just offering practical help uh, to our neighbours, offering to shop for them if they're self-isolated, maybe making the commitment to phone a friend regularly, donating food to a food bank. I'm sure you will be able to work out what that might mean for you in your own situation. And if loving at times seems hard, then Paul tells us here that we love because we have first been loved. He writes to us as brothers and sisters, holy and dearly loved. God's love for us is certain and sure. He's shown it to us in the person of Jesus, who God gave to us, in a sense, clothed in human flesh to show his love to us. And so loved by God, we clothe ourselves in love. And if that's our outer clothing, what about how we feel inside perhaps dealing with our own fears and anxieties. You may be joining us at home 
being asked to self-isolate, perhaps for the next 12 weeks at least, living at home on your own, and some more anxious. On the outside, Paul teaches us to put on love. On the inside, he teaches us, let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. He talks of peace. Where does that peace come from? I'd like to suggest it comes from knowing uh, the presence of God with us. Whatever your situation viewing this is, God is as present with you as he is with us here. So let me encourage you to, to seek him in prayer. Uh, our archbishops have called for this Sunday to be a national day of prayer and action, calling us to pray. They've suggested at seven o'clock this evening we light a candle and place it in our windows as a sign of hope and as a symbol of our prayers to God. Maybe in the coming weeks you could establish a simple pattern of prayer. I mean, traditionally Christians have prayed morning, noon and night, or morning, evening and night. On your own as a family, if uh, you've got others at home, establish a way of knowing God's presence and seeking it. We've used our daily news feed in the past, it's largely advertising events and telling you what's coming up. Um, we're going to move that now to means of connecting with one another, sharing news and things that we can pray for. So if you've received our news and prayer sheet this week, please use that uh, for your prayers. Paul also links the peace of God with the word of God. Let the word of God dwell in you richly, he writes. When God's word dwells in us, uh, then we know his peace. And so in Lent, we've been encouraging people in Heswell to use uh, daily Bible readings and reflections from the Live at Lent, either the booklet or you can download the app uh, from the uh, internet. There are many ways that you can read the Bible, uh, notes and books that might help you, a Bible reading plan with the uh, new version of the Bible, the, the app that you can put on your phone or computer, or just pick up a Bible. If you're doing that for the first time, let me suggest you simply start with John's Gospel and read a chapter each day. Coronavirus has, in a matter of a few weeks, also just stripped from us, especially those of us in the developed, rich technological countries, our illusion that we are invulnerable and immortal. We see people falling sick, sadly, we see people who have died, and we know that that will continue. There will be others who die too. But the peace of God runs deeper than that, even. It rests on the assurance that we do indeed have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So in a moment as we move to the communion table and as we share bread and wine virtually together, we're going to recall that Jesus, through the breaking of his body and the shedding of his blood, that restored our peace with God, that we might be indeed restored to communion with him, to know his presence and life now, but also for all eternity. So let me just leave you with those few thoughts. Outwardly, let's be clothed with love. Let's express that in humility, kindness and compassion to others so that everything we do, as the scripture said, is done in the name of Jesus. Inwardly, let's let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. Let's be assured of God's presence with us. And let's draw on the riches of his word. And let's know that our hope, even for eternal life, is sure in Jesus Christ. Martin's thoughts and our hearts. Let's now turn to pray. Our loving Father, as we light our candles tonight, um, may it express our confidence in, in your control over our situation and uh, please equip us to share that with others. As we think about our wider world at this time, Lord, we do especially think of those who are dealing with disappointment and children who have been uh, um, turned away from school and who are worried about their examinations. Um, all those events around the world which just won't happen. Um, we pray that you will give peace in people's hearts as they come to terms with uh, um, great change to plans that we all make so confidently. And you know, specifically, we'd like to commend to you our um, youth intern, Anna Saylor, who's been called back to Germany and uh, taken away from the work that she's loved here and, and in which she's brought us so much. We do commend her to you, Lord, and her family, and ask you to bless her and give her peace.
Lord, at that time, we want especially to think of those in the front line, the hospital staff, medical researchers, and all the support staff and uh, um, others at this time on whom our health and safety depend. Gracious God, give skill, sympathy, and resilience to all who are caring for the sick. And we want to pray especially, Lord, for all the people in our own church family and involved in that service. Laura Baker, Simon and Sue Bintley Barrett, David and Helen Baker, Stephen Blair, Steph Cambridge, Sarah Cannon, Ursula Clark, Fiona Cox, Isabel Crammond, Ruth Dunn, Lizzie Elson, Mark Elson, Anita Gillen, Chris and Judith Green, Anne Lees and Rocco Haddon, Liz and Sam Huddleston, Sarah House, Tom Kennedy, Emma Kirk, Bing Little, Anna Lodge, Beth and Michael McGeegan, Ian and Sophia Nelson, Dan and Rachel Ridgway, Catherine Shepherd, Pat Smy, Halla and Nathan Stevens, Amy Thompson, Anna and David Thorburn, Linda Wayne, Julie Wilson, Laura Wilson, Lawrence Wilson, Sasha and Woi Linyan, Kath Deliskovsky, and any that way have slipped our mind and, and deserve to be in that long list. Please grant your wisdom also to those searching for a cure. Strengthen all these people with your spirit, that through their work many will be restored to health. We ask this through the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And Lord, we ask especially, you will help us to care for our neighbours, for those who we hope will see that light shining from our candle. Lord Jesus Christ, you taught us to love our neighbour and to care for those in need, as if we were caring for you. In this time of anxiety, give us strength to comfort the fearful, to care for the sick, and to assure the isolated of our love and your love for your name's sake. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. point you'd like to pause the video and to get yourself a piece of bread or some wine or anything that would substitute those for you then please feel free to do so. Um, let me show you in my personal view Holy Communion this works this really feeds our faith um, because the Holy Spirit uh, takes our hearts and our actions in our hearts uh, and uses them so that the Holy Spirit is with you at home uh, and that you feed on him by faith uh, will mean that the bread and wine you take will, will actually nourish and feed your faith. So God of mercy and compassion, your word calls us to faith and love. Accept all we offer you this day in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise. Almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. For in these forty days of Lent, you lead us into the desert of repentance, and through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline, we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world, and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendour of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. So grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink you all of this. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So we're going to join together in praying the words that Jesus taught his followers to pray and which we know as the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So we may be physically uh, separated from each other. We share together in the body and blood of Jesus Christ, who by his Holy Spirit is present with us all. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. so we pray. Lord God, you feed us with the living bread from heaven. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and strengthen our love. Teach us to hunger for Christ, who is the true and living bread, and to live by every word that comes from your mouth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. join together in our uh, final hymn this morning, uh, Love Divine, All Loves Excel.
So thank you so much for sharing in our worship today. Um, if you've done this on Facebook, we'd love you to, to comment. Uh, if you're connecting with us for the very first time, then please send uh, the Heswell Parish Facebook page uh, a message, or otherwise feel free to get in touch via our parish office email, which is office at heswellparish.co.uk. And in particular, if you have a, a need that we would be able to meet, then please do uh, let us know. And as we finish together, uh, let's pray and seek God's blessing upon one another. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. And the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your heart. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and those whom you love this day and always. Amen.